gas exchange occurs at the lungs. Air enters the respiratory tract through the nose into the nasal cavity or oral cavity down the pharynx into the larynx and trachea. To prevent food from entering the respiratory tract, the opening of the larynx called the glottis is covered by the epiglottis, which is a little flap that closes during swallowing. As air moves down the trachea, it goes into the bronchi, which then divide into smaller structures called bronchioles and then eventually lead to the alveoli. The lungs are located in the thoracic cavity. They're separated from the abdominal cavity by the diaphragm. The lungs have two layers called pleura, an outer layer called the parietal pleura, and an inner layer called the visceral pleura. The space between the two membranes is called the intrapleural space, and this contains a small amount of fluid which helps to lubricate the two pleural surfaces. There's a pressure difference between the interpleural space and the lungs, and this allows for respiration to occur. Taking a closer look at the functional unit of the lungs, the alveoli, we notice that they look like a bunch of grapes. The reason that they look like this is to increase the surface area. This allows for a vast amount of gas exchange to occur. The exchange of gases between the alveoli and the blood occurs by simple diffusion. Oxygen diffuses from the alveoli into the blood down its pressure gradient from 100 millimeters of mercury down to 40 millimeters of mercury in the blood. Carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood into the alveoli down its pressure gradient from 45 millimeters of mercury to 40 millimeters of mercury. Gas exchange in the tissues also occurs by simple diffusion. Hemoglobin, which is a protein inside red blood cells or erythrocytes, carries oxygen to the tissues. Once oxygen arrives, it moves down its concentration gradient into the cell, and the accumulated carbon dioxide within the cell moves down its concentration gradient into the red blood cell. Once the CO2 arrives inside the red blood cell, it interacts with water. H H2O plus CO2 gives us carbonic acid. Carbonic acid then breaks down into H plus and bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is a great way of transporting carbon dioxide through the blood back into the lungs and eventually through the same process is converted back to CO2 and is then exhaled. Looking at the hemoglobin disassociation curve, we see that the oxygen affinity of hemoglobin is affected by many factors. Hemoglobin becomes a better retainer and has a higher affinity for oxygen during low temperatures, low hydrogen ion concentrations, low CO2 concentrations, as well as low 2,3 DPG concentrations. However, hemoglobin becomes a better donor or has a lower affinity when the concentration of 2,3 DPG increases, concentration of CO2 increases, or concentration of uh, hydrogen ion increases, or the temperature increases. Thank you for tuning into Biology Made Simple. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment.